Hey guys, for some time I've been questioning the accuracy of this little generic balance checker or whatever you want to call it. I use it to verify the voltage on my cells uh, and I, the idea is to make sure that all cells ha have the same starting or ending voltage on a pack. So at any rate, over time, I've, on some of my batteries, I've noticed that the readings on this can be off quite a bit uh, from one cell to the next. So uh, there are a couple of things that I've done. W one. I went out and bought a, a little bit of a higher end. This is an ISDT backgo checker. So this is a balancer and a cell checker. And I guess this has a balance function, uh, which will help bring the cells down at the end of a flight. I haven't used it yet, but that's my understanding. I still have my lead from the how to fix an out of balance lipo cell video. And the plan is to use this and take voltage readings with a voltmeter on a six cell pack, document the voltage, check it again with the generic and then check it again with the ISDT checker. And I'm gonna, as a control, I'm gonna balance that against the measurements that I took on the iCharger 306B. So on the iCharger 306B, I measured the internal resistance, which on this particular battery looks fine. It's 222322, so that's fine. There's, there's no problem with that. And then as far as the voltage goes, this pack's been in storage, it's 0 0.83, 0 0.83, and then the rest of the cells are 0.82. So according to the eye charger, this is a very well-balanced cell. I mean, we're off a hundredth of a volt on two cells, and those two are the same, and my IR is the same. So without any further talking, let's get into it and take a look and see if we can figure out if these are accurate, if this is a better choice, or if the only real way to know the truth is to connect it to a very high-end charger or a, uh, a voltmeter. I'm going to start off by using the lead that I made for the how to balance the lipo cell video. The way this works, you just take two leads, a positive and a ground, and you connect one lead to the ground pin, which on these packs it starts all the way on one side or the other. So there's the ground pin, and then the next one just goes into the next lead up. Before you do that, make sure the ends aren't touching, <laughs> or you'll get a nice little surprise. So I'm going to connect my two leads here. And if you can see the meter, that's reading 3.826. So I'm going to document that. Okay, and now we just move on to the next one. And all you do to move on to the next one is you just move this pairing up to the next set of pins. Just move up one. Okay, so there's the connection on the ground. There's hot. 3.828. All right, if you're watching close, you'll notice that I shortened the leads on these because it got too close. So I don't like that, so I what I did is I made them offset leads, so it makes it a lot harder for the wires to touch either, each other. So let's get back to it. One, There's one, two, we're on the third cell. Get that one in there. Get it hot connected. Get it ground connected. And 3.82. And let's take a look at number four. Three point eight one nine and number five three point eight two seven and finally number six three point eight one nine. All right, so let's see how that compares against the charger. So 3.826 against 8.83. So if I rounded that up, I would say that's accurate. I'm going to put a check mark there. 3.828, if I round that up, I'd say that's accurate. 3.820, round down, or actually it's right on the money, I'd say that's accurate. 3.819, if you round that up on number four, that's accurate. And then 3.827, if we round down, that is 82, that's accurate. And then 3.819, which rounds to 82, that's accurate. So what that tells me is I trust the eye charger and I trust my voltmeter. They both came up with readings that are equal, basically. So we're gonna work, we're gonna work from there with the assumption that these this baseline is accurate. Okay. Alright, next up is the generic 
balancer, and I promise you it's going to move a lot faster now because you don't have to do all this individual stuff. So I'm just going to connect that, and we're going to look at the individual cells on this cell checker. I'm not sure. Let me move the camera and make sure we can see that. That looks like a pretty good view. Okay, so let's go. 3.83 for cell number one. I have to move this just a little bit. So 3.83, it's actually 3.833. Sorry about the writing, I'm kind of working around the camera here. So cell number two is 3.834. Cell number three is 3.826. Cell number, f oh sorry, that was number three. This is number four, is 3.8. To zero, and then cell number five is three point eight four four, and cell number six is three point eight zero three. All right, let's go through and calculate the differences here. So point I already did the first one. It was point zero zero seven was the difference. The differences are, in every single case except for the last cell, the generic checker was read slightly higher, but very small margin of error here. On the last cell, the voltmeter and the eye charger had cell 6 higher, and the generic had cell 6 lower. In every other case, cell 6 was higher, 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 and higher. It was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Here's the thing. Look at the difference between these two. This is four one hundredths, tenths, one hundred, four one hundredths higher on this one than on on this bottom cell. So that's something. That's the concerning part, and that's the kind of stuff that that's made me wonder if I had something wrong with my generic checker right there. Three point eight four against three point eight zero. For, for parallel charging, to me, that's no good. I need that 0 .80 to be closer to these others. And frankly, I'd like to see that at 0 .82 to be a little closer. Okay, let's move on to the last device, and we'll see what it tells us. So here's your unbox. There we go. Again, not a big unbox fan because th things don't agree. But there we go. Unbox. Unbox. Get that out of here. Oh, hey, it's got a little lanyard. I'm going to keep that. That's actually a neat idea. Okay, now, not sure if you have to plug a battery into it or not. I bet you do. I'm going to plug that, that guy in, and then we can check the... Where's ground? Ground's at top. Okay. So I'm going to plug this thing in. I'm going to bring the camera down so you can see the screen. Let's get the per cell voltage documented on this ISDT. So cell 1, we're looking at 3.816. And cell 2, this thing have a... Okay, cell 2 is 3.826. Cell 3 is 3.815. Cell 4 is 3.821. 5 is 3.819 and 3.819. All right, now let's get the calculator out and see what the differences are. 0.816, that's 0 0.01828 minus 0.826. We've got 0 0.8002 higher. Now if we look at the difference between the two, we can see the truth. So the generic tester, 0 0.007 higher against 0 0.01 lower. So that one was actually a closer measurement. And then point after that, the, the ISD, ISDT pretty much got it. It was 0 0.002 against 0 0.06, 0 0.05, that was close. 0 0.01, that was actually, the generic was actually closer on the reading. How about that? Yeah, it was by point zero zero one. Okay, point zero zero eight on cell number five against point zero one seven, but 
here's where the problem comes in. Because if I were to look at this and I wanted a parallel charge, with this reading at 0.844 against 0.803, I wouldn't do it. I'd have to go balance, I would balance this out somehow. I would either use my balancing method or I'd, I'd run a discharge cycle and cycle it or I would trust what was going on on the eye charger. But the point is that this tool that's what I use to determine what has to happen next. So based on what I see, that information is not good enough for me to make a decision on whether or not I want to do parallel charging with this, with this battery because that's too far off, 0.84 against 0.80. If it were just this one, 0.83, I'd probably do it and, and trust the charger to get things back in line for me. But based on the readings I'm seeing on this one, this is a much closer, I mean, you're talking 8.2, 8.2, 8.2, 2, 2, that's a little low. 8382. I would I'd put that on there in a second and I wouldn't even think about it. So there we go. My, it looks like my instincts are right. I'm going to wind up putting this one in the field box and keeping it there and I'm going to use this little guy. This will be the one that stays up on the bench. So there you go guys. There's a little method for you to check and make sure that your data is accurate. Um, we use the voltmeter as a baseline. We use an eye charger which is a known good charger with good good information as a baseline just to check those two against each other. And we got a good baseline number that was very accurate. And the checkers now allow us to have a good picture on whether or not we're going to parallel charge or whatever other maintenance you need to do. You got a good picture. So with that in mind, first impressions out of the box are good. I'm going to play with this thing a little bit more and probably do a little intro video on it for you. And we'll go from there. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it informative. If you did, I definitely would appreciate your subscription down there in the bottom. And then don't forget to hit that little notification bell so you're informed when new material is put up on the channel. All right, take it easy. Okay, so let's get the cell voltage. Or okay, so let's... Okay. Ah. Let's get the cell voltage. Beep.